Hello viewers, we're coming to you live from our main studio in Bacao, the Gambia. This is N24 News and I am your presenter, Miriam Matlenjai. Coming up in the next minutes, Gambia Armed Force says soldiers' salary deduction will be addressed by PMO. President Barrow sworn in cabinet members to serve under his government. In sports, Senegal overcame Equatorial Guinea to set up Afghan semi-finals against Burkina Faso. Mason Greenwood has been arrested over rape claim. On the international front, Sao Paulo floods kill at least 19 and leave many homeless. Burkina Faso suspended by a regional body over coup. These and more to future in our today's bulletin. Stay tuned. And we start tonight's bulletin with President Barrow, after being elected by the Gambians in the December 4th election, has sworn in his transitional cabinet, on which many cabinet members retain their positions. Our reporter Laminba tells us more. After winning the presidential election, President Adama Barrow recently sworn in his cabinet members in Banjul. President Barrow addresses the newly sworn cabinet members on which they saw continuous commitment after his presidential landslide victory. Following his inauguration, the constitution requires him to form an executive cabinet to run the affairs of the country for the next five years. Speaking at the swearing-in, Barrow expressed his satisfaction to his cabinet members during his first term as president. Madam Vice President, Honorable Ministers, I congratulate you all on your new appointments, which take effect from January 20, 2022. I sincerely thank you for accepting your new appointments and for taking the oath of office to begin a new era in the governance process of the Gambia. I will not do justice to you if I do not publicly declare my appreciation and gratitude for your laudable efforts and the commendable commitment you demonstrated during my first term in office. You executed your duties responsibly and with devotion to ensure that we succeed together in delivering on our development aspirations. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, we are sure to deliver on our promise as a government and working individually and in solidarity in the last five years. We have managed to create a legacy that will visibly go down in the history of the Gambia. I believe that no matter how long one serves in public office, it is more important than anything else to sincerely make the best out of the opportunity put at our disposal to serve the nation. Longevity does not matter as much as the quality and significance of the service we provide to our people and nation while in office. Honorable cabinet members, I thank you all for the period you serve as vice president and cabinet ministers respectively. While this is a transitional cabinet until I appoint a permanent one in the near future, you are expected to perform your functions in accordance with the oaths you took today and within the law and the rules and regulations that govern public office. Once again, I congratulate you and wish you success as we start a new journey to deliver in the service of our beloved Gambia. The cabinet members that are sworn recently are not new to the public. As said by the president, it is a transitional cabinet among those executive members that were sworn for the second time in Barrow's government. Among the people in the transitional cabinet are foreign affairs minister and Gambians abroad, minister of justice, finance and others. Do swear 
that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. I do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. Reporting for N24, I am Lamin Ba. Following reports that some soldiers were deducted in their January salaries, the Gambia Armed Forces has said its high command invited officials of the Personnel Management Office, PMO, to the Defense Headquarters, seeking clarifications on the matter. PMO said is to rationalize and standardize the Alawan structure across the civil service have affected the Gambia Armed Forces as well as other institutions according to an explanation from the PMO. However, the exercise led to the deduction of the take-home pay of the entire membership of the Gambia Armed Forces. Meanwhile, the Gambia Armed Forces High Command wishes to assure Gambia Armed Forces personnel that their pay and welfare is topmost priority on the Chief of Different Staff's priority list, the Gambia Armed Forces Statement said. IBIS Idea Institute, an institution that is to build and train its students to venture in the fashion industry and has graduated 13 of its students with a diploma certificate. Performance Korea tells us more. Fashion industry in the Gambia continues to win more people as IDAS Ideas graduated 13 of its students with a diploma certificate. The 13 students all received certificates indicating their completion of a diploma course at the IDAS Ideas Institute. This graduation is the first ever graduation done by the school since it started students training. Ida Saini Conte, the CEO of Ida's Ideas Institute, was full of praises for her husband who helped her to get to this level. She also thanked everyone who gathered at the ceremony, among others. Graduation signifies the completion of a course and end of a long run of sleepless nights for students. Ida too is one of the 13 graduates and expressed the delight for completing a diploma course. We would like to show our gratitude to all those who shared their wisdom, skills, and experience with us and prepared us for the new world. Our school for us has been like our home because along with knowledge and learning, we also got scolding like kids get from their parents. We know our dear trainers, the principal are always, are always strict at times as, as they wanted us to become disciplined and learn good manners, which will help us in the new life. In the end, I would like to appeal to all my friends to party hard tonight, guys, and enjoy well as we have to make the most out of this day. <laughs> wishing, all, wishing all of you a very successful life ahead, and once again, thank you all, and I thank all of you that are present today. Claudia Nokol, Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education Minister, was among the guests and urged people to venture into skill learning as everyone needs it. Madam Cole was also full of praises for Ida's innovations. Even the people with all those high degrees, they have skills. Skills is about everyday life. All the things that we do in our life, if we want to do them properly, if we want to succeed, if we want people to be impressed with whatever we have done, if we want people to look at what we do and they appreciate it and say, oh, it's good, you've done very well, it means you have used skills in doing it. So skills are very important. And they are very important today more than ever before. Not all the young people we turn out of our classrooms can sit in an office. Neither can all of them enter university. Some will have to go and acquire skills so that they can use those skills to complement what those people who come out of the university with all their expertise and all the knowledge can do. We do need them. We do need people with skills. Upon the completion of certificate issuing, a fashion display of graduates' collection was also done to show what they learned. The next one can also come in.
Let's have another model also coming in. Another model, please. Let's have another model, please, to come in. One more model, please. One more model, please. Is that the last model? This is the first graduation of Ada's IDS Institute and 13 students were graduated. Performus Korea, N24 News. The National Assembly, in partnership with Westminster Foundation for Democracy, held an open forum which was dubbed as Open Day. This was done to celebrate the MP's work, among others. More in this report. The National Assembly, in partnership with the Westminster Foundation for Democracy, held an open forum dubbed National Assembly Open Day to celebrate the work and contribution of the National Assembly. With people often lamenting being left out in some decision making, these people say no to that. Speaking on behalf of the National Assembly Speaker, Honorable Keba Kebaro, this is what he had to say. It is my honor and privilege to preside over the National Assembly Open Day in the annals of our history. I am indeed grateful that our stakeholders have responded to our call to grace this important occasion with us. As Speaker of the Fifth Legislature, my goal has always been to ensure continuing prospect for the National Assembly by acting fairly and in the interest of all Gambians. With many being around on this day, Honorable Halifa Salah was the guest speaker and made mention of policy and governance. Salah also said effective governance requires executive members who bring business to Assembly to be well groomed. 74, 77 and 109 of the Constitution makes the whole cabinet accountable to the National Assembly. Members of cabinet could be summoned to attend the meetings of the National Assembly to address matters of national concern. The executive has to bring bills to the National Assembly in order to develop any legal framework for the establishment of an office or the execution of a policy that requires financial backing. Section 79 restricts the executive to negotiating international agreement but makes its ratification by the National Assembly mandatory before concluding any such agreement to put it into effect. Chernogay was part of the speakers and one of Gambia's point. Man is hungry for a meal he cannot have because the chef knows better and age is the man that this young man is a slave kept in chains by the law that puts one man above another. This young man is a working cop. Killed by a system cut to our people by the children of Shaitan from the gates of hell, a system of people seeming capable to unlearn or change this young man is a perpetrator of his own tragedy. Reporting for N24, I am Laminba. In sports. The Gambia Football Federation GFF learned with great shock and regret the passing of former women's Scorpion team manager Nancy Fraser Lewis, popularly called Auntie Nancy. The sad event happened on Sunday, 30th January 2022 at the Edward Francis Mall following a long illness. Until at the end of her death, she was part of the management of Gamtel Gamsel Football Club and a former member of the GFF Women's Football Committee. She is described by many as an obsessively passionate football fan and youth activist and has given all her strength to the advancement of the beautiful game, particularly women's football. Mason Greenwood, Manchester United player, has being arrested over claims of rape and abuse his girlfriend is accusing of him. His team has said he will not be training or playing with the team until investigations are done. Here is more of the details in this report. Manchester United footballer Mason Greenwood has been arrested on suspicion of rape and assault following allegations on social media. 
Greater Manchester Police said it was made aware of social media images and videos posted by a woman reporting incidents of physical violence. It added a man in his 20s has since been arrested on suspicion of rape and assault. He remains in custody for questioning and inquiries are ongoing. Manchester United earlier said the player will not return to training or matches until further notice. The club said they do not condone violence of any kind and had been aware of the allegations on social media, but will make no further comments until the facts have been established. Mason Greenwood has not responded to the social media allegations. The 20-year-old footballer, who made his debut for the club in March 2019, signed a four-year deal in February 2021 after rising up through the ranks of the Manchester United Academy. There will be no more training, no matches for Man United's teenager, for now as he is on a suspension. Away from the Mason saga to the Afghan in Cameroon. Senegal overcame Equatorial Guinea to set up an Africa Cup of Nations semi-finals against Burkina Faso. They won the Guineans by three goals to one with Ismail Assar scoring the last goal. Ex-Bristol City forward farmer Ajeju put Senegal ahead with a first time strike following Sergio Mane's pass. Equatorial Guinea were awarded a penalty before the decision was overturned but then equalized soon after through Janik Boaila's low shot. But substitute Sheikh Kuyate volleyed Senegal ahead with what force Ismail Assar side footing a late third. Senegal, who never have won the tournament, faced Burkina Faso on Wednesday before Egypt played Cameroon in the second semi final on Thursday, with the final taking place on Sunday, 6th February. Equatorial Guinea, 114th in FIFA's world rankings, had been hoping to cause an upset against a Senegal side ranked 28th, the highest placed African nation. Meanwhile, Mohamed Salah scored one goal and set up the order as Egypt beat Morocco in extra time in the second quarter final on Sunday. Sofian Bufal gave Morocco an early lead with a penalty after Ayman Ashraf caught Ashraf Hakimi, a decision given by the video assistant referee. But Salah tapped in an equalizer after Yasin Bonu parried a header and the game went to extra time. Liverpool's Salah squared for Aston Villa's Trezeguet to tap in a winner. Carlos Queiroz's side will face host Cameroon in Thursday's semi-final. And away from the latest happenings of sports, let's now look at the latest of the international front. The African Union AU has suspended Burkina Faso a week after the military seized power in a coup. It said the country would be blocked from all AU activities until constitutional orders was restored. The West African Regional Bloc, ECOWAS, which suspended Burkina Faso last week, has sent a delegation to the capital, Ogadugu. It will join a team from the United Nations for talks with the new military leaders. There was a bit of a sad news in Brazil as 19 people were killed in Sao Paulo as a result of flood, officials said. This has, however, left people homeless after the disaster. More in this report. At least 19 people have died in floods and landslides caused by torrential rains in the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo, officials say. Nine others have been injured and many more are missing, while about 500 families have been left homeless. Sao Paulo's governor, Jao Doria, has released emergency funds after surveying the flooded areas by air. Heavy rains since the start of the wet season have killed more than 40 people in Bahia and Minas states. One of the worst hit areas in Sao Paulo state is Franco da Rocha, where four people died in a landslide and six others were rescued. Firefighters and health workers walk around the clock looking for victims in the moon. But local authorities believe up to 14 people are still missing. The mayor's office in Franco de Rocha urged people living in areas at risk of flooding to seek shelter with friends and relatives. Reporting for N24, I am Maimona Dari.
Viewers, I'm afraid that's all time we have in today's bulletin. Stay tuned to your favorite N24 TV.